brought to you by Charity Mobile, the phone company that shares your values. More information is available at CharityMobile.com. A radical proposal was made at the Catholic Identity Conference over the weekend, one that is worth examining in light of recent news in the church. It's radical because the last time anybody who could try it did try it divided the traditionalist movement along factional lines. During a time when the crisis in the church was very real, but not as overtly bad as it is now, in the 35 years since this was tried last, those wounds have, we'll say, mostly healed, though adjacent organizations to the movement continue to go after traditional Catholics in the name of Catholic Orthodoxy, which should have everyone asking questions whenever it happens. But for now, let's focus on the question posed at the conference this past weekend. The Catholic Identity Conference happened again this past weekend in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. If you're not familiar with it, the Remnant hosted an event where influential speakers were invited to give talks on a number of issues, and a sort of declaration about the need to resist Francis was issued, and various speakers opined on what that might look like. On the first day, Speaker Eric Frakovich touched on the one subject that divides traditionally-minded Catholics more than any other, or used to divide them at any rate. And that is the Society of St. Pius X and the consecration of bishops in 1988 by Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre that earned him what is widely considered to be an illegitimate excommunication. And how, according to the speaker, the bishops of the SSPX need to consecrate more bishops, regardless of what Rome may think about this. LifeSite News reported on the Catholic Identity Conference, and their article on this part of the conference covers this subject in this way. Quote, Conference co-host Eric Frankovich opened the day with harrowing remarks about the lengths that faithful Catholics must be willing to go in order to defend the traditional faith of the Church. After laying out a severe description of the current state of the Church under Pope Francis, Frankovich brought up the issue of the Society of St. Pius X, the SSPX, controversial to some, and how the SSPX may be in a position to consecrate bishops again soon perhaps without permission from Rome. No other bishop is going to ordain their priests, he said, so they have to have their own, their own bishops. Recalling Pope John Paul II's 1988 declaration that Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre had incurred the penalty of excommunication for consecrating bishops without papal approval and opining that a similar moment may soon come to pass, Frankovich said, all I can say is please, please include me in that excommunication. All stand with St. Athanasius and Marcel Lefebvre. What would be, we be excommunicated from, he asked. Answering his own question, he said, We would be excommunicated by a regime that worships the Pacamama. Ending his opening remarks, Frankovich called the conference attendees to action and stated, We need to resist the Francis and New Order of the Ages. Together with God, we will win this war. End quote. That's a shocking statement to you, and you're shocked that it earned a large amount of applause when he said it. Real awakening to the crisis in the church is to come to realize that France isn't, isn't actually the problem in the papacy. He's just the latest and worst version of it. Every one of his predecessors going back to the 1950s were trying to change the faith and worked with the secular enemies of the church to defang the church and make it no threat to the program of our rulers. I've talked about this before with Paul VI going to the UN and John the 23rd playing kissy face with, with the secular powers. They've all been part of the problem. Francis didn't just come out of nowhere, manifesting out of thin air. Case in point, the German bishops have been bluntly stating what the Novus Ordo paradigm in the church is really about. They've just been saying it more honestly and openly than anyone else has been recently. And they doubled down recently from Catholic News Agency headline, Religion is interruption, not continuity, German bishops president says. Again, we're seeing a rejection of the hermeneutic of continuity from the German bishops here. And they're simply echoing a rejection of that that Francis and Cardinal Roach and other modernists have made in the past year. They've all said there's no such thing as a hermeneutic of continuity, that the church is now functionally different. They're admitting that the church is different now than it was before the council. An admission we should let them make and take them at their word on because at the end of the day, if we get the terms of the engagement we're, we're in right now correct, we can know how to this battle must move forward for the restoration of the faith in the church. From the Catholic News Agency article, quote, the president of the German Bishops Conference, Bishop George Botzing, 
said that the shortest definition of religion is quote unquote interruption and that some forms of continuity people seek from religion are quote unquote frankly suspect. Botzing spoke in a live stream mass on Tuesday on the occasion of the bishop's plenary assembly, which is being held in the central German town of Fulda from September 26th to the 29th, reported CNA Deutsch, CNA's German language news partner. In his homily, the Bishop of Limburg said, all too surely asserted continuities, i.e. seamless connections according to the motto, that has always been so, that has always been believed, so what was wrong yesterday cannot be right today, are frankly suspect. Botzing spoke of the great images in which God's people spelled out their historical experiences with faith and recognized God's guidance in them. The German prelate who expressed his disappointment in Pope Francis in May said it was indeed in our human nature to seek bridges between yesterday and tomorrow, to draw temporal lines and discover meaningful connections, which is often only possible in retrospect. We seek continuity, but the shortest definition of religion is and remains interruption, as Johann Baptist Metz put it. Metz was an influential German priest and theologian who died in 2019. End quote. Do you get it yet? Interruption, not continuity. That theologian cited there, Johann Baptist Metz, was a modernist theologian who openly argued for politicizing the church in advocacy for what he called a theology of the world. This is a pretty strong admission by Bishop Botzing that what the Germans are doing, as well as the modernist apostates in Rome, they're making the church worldly, replacing our faith with the anti-faith of the world. Once we accept that, we can begin to assess the depths of the crisis in the church. Here's another case in point. LifeSet reported that the Flemish bishops claimed that Francis supports their program for offering James Martin couples a formal blessing in the church, including a mass setting that clearly is designed to look in every way like a wedding mass. If you're not aware of this story, the Flemish bishops published this nonsense just last week, right before visiting Francis on their ad limina visits with him and claimed that their work was inspired by Francis's heretical encyclical Amoris Laetitia. Now they claim Francis is supporting their efforts. From LifeSite News, quote, Bishop Johann Bonny of Antwerp, who with a group of Flemish bishops in Belgium recently published guidelines for the blessings of James Martin couples, has now publicly said it is spoken with the Pope and that, quote, our guidelines for these blessings that we have recently published are in line with Pope Francis. Bonnie is currently in Germany, where he met with the German bishops at their annual fall meeting in Fulda, speaking with them behind closed doors. In this context, he gave katholisch.de, the official website of the German bishops, an interview in which he encouraged the German bishops to continue the work of their synodal path, which recently declared that James Martin activities are not sinful. At the end of this katholisch.de interview, Bonnie was asked about the reaction to his own actions, since he himself in 2015 already advocated for these blessings. The interviewer reminded him that he was still a bishop, even though he advocated for such a blessing. Bonnie responded, yes, I am still a bishop. I was called to Rome, and there I said what was my opinion about it. I have also personally spoken with Pope Francis about it. When asked about the result of this conversation with the Pope, Bonnie answered that, I know now what he thinks. That is for me the most important thing. The Belgian bishop insisted that the Pope is also in agreement with him and his Flemish fellow bishops and their newly released guidelines. And I know that our guidelines for the blessings of these couples, which we recently published, are in line with Pope Francis, he said, adding that this was important to him because communion with the Pope is sacred to me. The prelate continued, it is the personal responsibility that the Pope has given us bishops and that he also supports. However, the same topics do not have to be, have to and cannot be discussed worldwide at all times. Moreover, the Pope does not have to write everything down on paper, just as I, as a bishop, do not record every conversation on paper, end quote. Folks, at this point, none of us should be surprised by this. Francis is apparently meeting with the German bishops, or will be very shortly. But what happens with that meeting or has happened is unknown at the time of the production of this episode. But when the Germans tried to force this change, 
throughout their synodal way onto the church in Germany by themselves, Francis publicly told them to stop, to put on the brakes. Not to stop because what they were doing was heresy, but to stop because they needed to wait for the whole church. Not long thereafter, all the synodal reports from the various national bishops' conferences came in, all calling for the same change to Catholic morality, or all the same changes because this isn't the only thing they were trying to change. Almost as if Francis knew what the outcome of that would be before it happened. Francis is signaling that he's planning to change the Catholic faith on the uh, James Martin issue soon. So there's no use in anyone denying that. Here's another example. LifeSite is reporting that Francis appointed a pro-Jimmy Martin disorder cardinal as head of the Dicastery for Culture and Education in the Roman Curia, which makes the guy Papa Biele, technically. <laughs> the cardinal is Jose Tolentino de Mendonca, who has long been an ally of the likes of Father James Martin, S.J. From the LifeSite report on this one, quote, a Portuguese prelate was named by Pope Francis to lead the new Vatican Dicastery for Culture and Education, having enjoyed a quote-unquote meteoric rise in the curial ranks and been a consistent promoter of the James Martin ideology. On Monday, Cardinal Jose Tolentino de Mendonca was appointed to become Prefect of the Dicastery for Culture and Education, a dicastery that was created in June under the terms of Predicate Evangelium which merged the Congregation for Catholic Education and the Pontifical Council for Culture. He has enjoyed a swift rise to the ranks of the Curia under the Francis Pontificate. Previously Vice Rector, Vice Rector of the Catholic University of Lisbon and the Rector of the Pontifical Portuguese College in Rome, he made a name for himself as an academic, a biblical scholar, and a quote-unquote priest poet, and was invited to lead Francis's 2018 Lenten retreat. After that retreat, Francis thanked Mendoka for having shown how the Holy Spirit works in non-believers, in quote-unquote pagans, and people of other religious confessions, and that the Holy Spirit is universal. It is the Spirit of God, which is for everyone. Thank you for this call to open ourselves without fear, without rigidity, to be pliable to the Spirit and not mummified in our structures that enclose us, end quote. I love it when Francis speaks heresy on the record and so openly. It makes my job easy. If the Holy Spirit is moving in other creeds, why do you need to become Catholic? Why did Jesus say, no one comes to the Father except through me? There isn't any reason if God can be found anywhere. And I know Francis agrees with my sentiment because he has publicly chastised missionaries in the past for spreading the gospel and making disciples of all nations, as our Lord commanded us to do. Cardinal Mendoca is pure. Francis through and through and represents the Francis rule rather perfectly. Here's some words he said from that same article, quote, he told the Portuguese publication Publico in 2010 that, quote, the church isn't a place of fullness, it's a place of searching. Our condition is thirst and desire. It isn't here and now that we realize our dreams. The church is this common road, not exempt from imperfections, open to a kind of progressivity. He added the church must have a, quote, unconditional sense of, quote, welcome and hospitality. Indeed, he also contradicted the church's command of chastity for people with James Martin interests, saying, quote, it is a proposal that cannot be imposed, but that is made. Each person who approaches the church carries a sacred story and must be welcomed, end quote. Ah, yes, a church that is ever-changing. Whatever happened to the faith being timeless, that Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. So again, back to what the speaker at the Catholic Identity Conference is calling for. The SSPX to consecrate more bishops without permission from Rome. What would they be excommunicated from? The ape of the church? The state of emergency clause remains in the code of canon law anyway, giving bishops permission without Rome if they de deem there's a state of emergency in the church. And if this stuff doesn't point to a state of emergency existing in the church in the same way that the Assisi conferences in 1986 made obvious, I don't know what does. The time has long since passed for the few decent prelates of the church to stop playing nice with Rome and Francis. And any resistance to modernism has to be led by them. Has to be. We live in a hierarchical church, and the laity must follow those bishops who still have the faith. In these discussions of the crisis in the church, St. Athanasius looms large. He looms over everything and has for decades. In ancient times, when the church was overwhelmingly dominated by heretics during the Arian crisis, 
St. Athanasius resisted and helped lead resistance, and he helped the laity preserve the faith at that time. Here, St. Athanasius' short letter to the laity is instructive and represents what the spirit of the traditionalist movement ought to be. Here he is, quote, May God console you. What saddens you is the fact that others have occupied the churches by force, while during this time you are on the outside. It is a fact that they have the premises, but you have the apostolic faith. They can occupy our churches, but they are outside the true faith. You remain outside the places of worship, but the faith dwells within you. Let us consider what is more important, the place or the faith, the true faith, obviously. Who has lost and who has won in this struggle? The one who keeps the premises or the one who keeps the faith? True, the premises are good when the apostolic faith is preached there. They are holy if everything takes place there in a holy way. You are the ones who are happy. You who remain within the church by your faith, who hold firmly to the foundations of the faith which have come down to you from apostolic tradition. And if an execrable jealousy has tried to shake it on a number of occasions, it has not succeeded. They are the ones who have broken away from it in the present crisis. No one ever will prevail against your faith, beloved brothers. And we believe that God will give us our churches back someday. Thus, the more forcefully they try to occupy the places of worship, the more they separate themselves from the church. They claim that they represent the church, but in reality, they are the ones who are expelling themselves from it and going astray. Even if Catholics faithful to tradition are reduced to a handful, they are the ones who are the true church of Jesus Christ, end quote. They have the buildings, we have the faith. That should be our mantra in this time, not submission to apostate Rome, which has clearly lost the faith as Our Lady of Lost to let warned. Given all of that, what do you think about this? Is the speaker at the Catholic Identity Conference right? Is he not thinking big enough? Should the few decent bishops left in the hierarchy help the SSPX with this? Should Vigano found a group like the SSPX? I have seen those recommendations made before. In my comment section and social media groups, I've seen it. I've had people tell me to my face that that's what should happen. And I'm curious what you think about this. So let me know in the comments. Please like and subscribe if you haven't. It really does help. As to sharing these messages on social media, that helps a lot as well. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.